For advanced work like this, ask your dealer... Kids, I'm going to tell you an incredible story. The story of how I met computers. It is undeniable that computers have a place in today's technological world. Almost every home now has a computer, which has become a necessity in our daily lives. Would you believe me if I said calculators are actually the ancestors of computers? Of course, they have nothing to do with the computers we know today, but they definitely were the first step on the journey. In the 1820s, British mathematician Charles Babbage spotted an opportunity. He created the first automatic calculator, the difference engine, that could compute several numbers and print out the results. Due to a lack of funds, he could not operate the device, but he never gave up and created the analytical engine that could handle more complicated tasks. The analytical engine included input and output units and storage, like today's computers. But unfortunately, he was way ahead of his time. The technology couldn't catch up with him, and he couldn't turn his plans into reality. However, his designs inspired others. We now have computers thanks to his vision, efforts, and sketches. By the 1890s, there was another development in the mechanical calculation. Herman Hollerith created equipment that automatically reads data punched onto cards. They were also some kind of memory card since they could be saved and reassessed as required. Howard Hathaway Aiken completed the first automatic electromechanical computer named the Harvard Mark I in 1944. It could operate in logarithm and trigonometry using the punched card approach. The Mark I was more than 49 feet long, 15 meters, 6.56 feet or 2.5 meters high, and 2 feet or 0.61 meters deep. So it was huge. Shortly after that, Conrad Zeus developed Z3, the first programmable computer. The Z3 was used for aerodynamic calculations, but was destroyed in a bombing raid on Berlin in late 1943. The war had become a solid reason for scientists and engineers to develop computers. John Mockley and J. Presper Eckert worked on a computer to calculate the projectile trajectories of artillery shells. It was called ENIAC, and it was considered the first modern computer as it ran at electronic speed without being slowed by any mechanical parts. ENIAC was a massive computer. It was large enough to occupy 1,800 square feet, or 167 square meters, of floor space and consumed 160 kilowatts of electrical power. Of course, computers began to shrink in size after the introduction of transistors instead of vacuum tubes and the invention of integrated circuits and microprocessors. Early computers required their users to have an expert level of technical knowledge. This began to change after the first personal computer, or PC, was launched in 1975, the Altair 8800. The Altair 8800 did not have a screen, but could be connected to a TV that served as a screen. After 1975, different companies started to produce cheaper and easier to use computers for individual users. Over time, hardware such as CD-ROMs, keyboards, monitors, and printers were produced to increase the functionality of the computer. In 1981, the first commercially successful portable computer, the Osborne One, went on sale. It had a mass of 23.5 pounds, or 10.7 kilograms, a 5-inch CRT screen, 64 kilobits of memory, and two floppy disk drives. After the invention of the Internet in 1989, computers were integrated with mobile phones, automobiles, and many other technologies and started to be widely used in schools, homes, and workplaces. So now you know the whole exciting story with its ups and downs. Of course, it's not any more exciting from the story of how I met video games. Didn't I ever tell you that story? Oh, <laughs> it all started when. Curious about the next story? Then turn on notifications so as not to miss the story of how I met video games next week.